Kia team, I hope you're all doing really well. Um, welcome back to school. So this is what we're starting off with this term. Um, today I've made this video to start explaining to you this new standard that we're going to be doing, um, describing what it is and what you're actually assessed on. Then I will be showing you a few exemplars from previous work um, and basically showing you the standard of work that is expected um, and examples of what that standard actually looks like instead of just sort of throwing words at you and you kind of sit in there going, uh-huh, right. So we'll be doing that first and in the second half you are going to be looking for inspiration and finding a starting point for your design narrative. This is basically the story that your spatial design is going to tell. So you're going to be going for a walk or just having a look around your garden or your house and finding something that basically inspires or kicks off your design process um, for this epic spatial design that you're going to be coming up with. Um, so buckle in, we're going on a journey. Okay, so now we're on to the standard. Uh, the standard that we're doing is Design and Visual Communication 3.3 Initiate Design Ideas Through Exploration. Woohoo! Uh, this is an external standard and it is worth four credits, just so you know. Now on to the really important stuff. So on the second page of that document, the first bit there, it describes what you need to do or what is involved with each step of that achievement um, criteria. But if you look at points three, four, and five, it basically breaks down what you are actually specifically looking at. So with these visual communication strategies, things like abstraction, recombination, tessellation, exaggeration, all of those different things, we will be doing those as drawing activities um, within this project. So we will be working on those as tasks in this project. Now the experiences. Um, these, it says here, can be teacher or student selected and can include natural or built landscapes, film clips, music, case traps, blah, 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 blah. Um, so this is basically how you're recording your design ideas or what you're actually doing. So the activity that we're going to do today will be working towards those experiences. You're starting to collect a bunch of information and do some research into finding that experience or that thing that sparks this design um, or that becomes that starting idea. Great, so now we're going to have a look at some exemplars for this standard. Um, remember that these are just a starting point. They're to give you an idea of the standard of work and also what the whole process might look like. What we're doing or where we start is going to be completely different to what we do throughout and where we end up. The link for the NZQA exemplars is in the brief document. So this is the excellence exemplar that is available on that website. Um, 
this whole project actually also meets the spatial design standard that we're doing as well. So part of this you would have already done as your context study in term one. Basically what we're looking at for this assessment for the ideation standard is that you were finding inspiration um, from an object or to form a narrative um, such as this. So this ideation part that this student has done here is all formed around this idea of flax and um, this woven flax flower. You'll see here that this student has actually investigated different shapes or different objects um, as starting points or as the beginning of their narrative. So they've looked at um, Waikato Tainui as the, um, as the river. They've looked at the fern and they've looked at the harakeke. For each object that they've investigated as a starting point, they've started off with things like images or photographs, gone to an observational drawing, a simplified 2D drawing, and then how that could look as a 3D object, um, using some of those things that they notice in those drawing processes. So things like patterns, line, contrast, um, all of those kind of things, and then applying those principles into a 3D object. What we're going to be doing to start with is just looking at photographing an observational drawing and maybe even some 2D patterns at this point. So you're only looking at the very beginning of these, uh, of these exemplars for inspiration for what we're doing right now. These exemplars can be really good to look at just to understand maybe less about what you need to do step by step, but more about what kind of standard of drawing and what kind of standard of exploration you should be looking for. In terms of the later development of this design, this is what we'll be moving on to with our um, spatial design project later on. So feel free to have a look through some of those other exemplars that are on that NZQA site. Again, this is just to give you an idea of the standard of work that you might be doing or sort of where you could take your ideas. For your first activity, you are going to be going on a walk and looking for some inspiration from nature. Yay! The details of this are in the brief document and in the first activity that's in there, which is available in Google Classroom. Sweet, so when you're ready to leave the house, there are three things that you need to have with you. You will need a notebook, you will need a pencil, and you will need your phone. That's what I'm filming on, so. <laughs> um, also, it can be really helpful if you take something like a duffel bag with you, because then you can put things into it. Um, this is just a grocery bag that I'm using. Um, because if you find things that are particularly interesting, or you're finding really hard to sketch, um, in the actual moment, you can just pop them in your bag, take them home and sketch them later. Just a quick reminder that you should actually complete your brainstorm before you do your walk. Don't just go wandering out into nature without having a plan first. Also just a heads up, it was a little bit windy on the day so there's a bit of disturbance. probably tell I am not in Papamoa anymore. I actually came for the lockdown, I came up to see my parents and my family up in Pai here, so that's where I'm chilling at the moment. Um, so yeah, let's have a look around. You see somewhere like a beach, it's really easy to find inspiration from. Um, you can find things like this, which I just found. I've taken a few photos of it. Um, this is just seaweed, for those of you that aren't familiar with seaweed. Um, it's interesting in its shape and sort of the way it's composed and how it's just like a big bunch of lots of small things. Really basic kind of thing, but something that caught my eye. So cool. The other thing that's really important um, when you find things like this that you're thinking about drawing or that you've photographed is if they are small like this and not too smelly and not too gross, you can actually just take them home with you. So just pop it in your bag. Another piece of advice for while you're doing your walk is that you're better off getting too much evidence than not enough. So if there's literally anything that catches your eye or that you think could be kind of interesting to look at or might fit in with your theme, or maybe it's not even relevant at all, take a photo of it anyway because you can always come back to it. You don't have to include it in your project, but it's good to have it just in case. So if you're not near a beach, you can also go somewhere like into the bush or to a local park. Anywhere where you can find things like trees, shrubs, 
stones, paths, anything like that. Um, and it's a really good place to find inspiration, um, especially from things like plants, like ferns. Remember when you're taking things with you, not to pick a plant or a flower that's actually still living. Um, only take it if it's dying or if it's already broken. So something like this leaf, perfect. Great, so once you've collected all that awesome information, you are just going to compile it as a mood board, which is basically just a collection of images, um, everything that you've collected on one page. Just make sure that when you're working in Google Slides that you are actually working in an A4 or an A3 format. So that means that the size of your page needs to be paper size rather than screen size. So to alter the page size, you need to go in Google Slides, go to File, Page Setup, and then you need to change the dimensions. For an A3 page, it is 42 by 29.7 centimeters, and then click apply. Sweet, so there's your page. Now I just want you to throw all the information on it. And just another quick note, if you're really unsure about your drawing or sketching skills at this point, um, don't worry, if all, you, all you've got is photos and videos, just keep it like that for now. In the next task, we will actually be doing some observational drawing skills and some 2D drawing skills. So just make sure that when you've finished that activity that it's handed in on Google Classroom. See you next time. Make good choices.